Hey everyone, so the next problem I'm about to face in making an acquisition into a private business is the people problems. So well, the lying, the stealing, the firing of people, it can, can really be a nightmare if you've got the wrong people in place. And if you're buying a business, sometimes those people are already part of the business. So the way I'm going to think about it is like this. So I think the top person in the business is obviously critical. They have to be focused. They have to be motivated. They have to be dedicated. They also have to be very responsible. That's the monkey has to sit with the CEO. That's a, that's a hard person to find. And the problem is if they're a great person in charge already and they're the ones selling the business well it's pretty easy for them to be half out the door already so you want them to stay and you want them to want to grow but I think incentives I think incentives have to be internally motivated it's going to be hard to motivate them with money because I think if it is about the money well yeah it, that can work and it can also backfire because when times get tough, good luck giving that person a pay cut, like a significant pay cut if they're only there for the money. And they're not going to get through those tough times with you. They're going to be looking for the, the exit. I think sometimes having the person selling the business, keeping equity, I, I sometimes I think that will be enough. But I think all, actually most of the time it won't be enough because... Think about it like this. Let me put $10 million in your bank account and you've been working in this business for 20 years and you've put it on the market because you're tired and you put $10 million in your bank account and that's 80% of the business and like, are you really, are you really still motivated for that extra two mil? Like you've just got 10, you're already sitting pretty. You don't have to work anymore for money. Um, the stress levels have gone right away. Maybe if you're the right character, that's great. But I think a lot of people are going to be looking for the exit. So somehow you've got to be able to trust that person. Uh, you've got to believe in each other. You've got to be on the same team, uh, willing to support each other. You're looking for a superstar CEO. So this is going to be my counterintuitive point on incentives. I think that no matter how well you incentivize someone, if they're an arsehole, well, you're just incentivizing an arsehole. Now, I definitely do think incentives are important. And Charlie Munger is completely right when he says, show me the incentive and I'll show you the outcome. But I actually think it's only half the battle. See, I just think that too many hold co or serial acquire people who are conglomerating businesses together. I think that... I think that they think that incentives are all that matter and that they can incentivize the same way across all their different businesses. And I just don't believe that to be true. And I think that approach of incentivizing the same way across all your businesses is like a lazy shortcut. I mean, I think a lot of people approach this like some sort of mathematical equation or like it's designed in a spreadsheet and that's just not the reality of incentives and people. I do think you need to have great incentives, but I think you have to, more importantly, have great people. I think bad incentives with a great person can still lead to trouble over time. But the thing is with a great person, if they're great, they're going to help you work out these incentives to be better aligned for them and for the business and for the owner. And if they're great people, you're going to be able to have that honest conversation with them. You're going to be on the same page with them. You're going to be able to communicate better with that person. And the culture of the business is going to be better and you're going to have a happier workplace. You're going to enjoy working with this person because they're great rather than trying to work with someone who is a bit of an asshole and you're trying to keep them on board and you're just trying to incentivize them so that they keep doing great, fantastic work, but the culture might be falling down. Uh, employees might be resigning because they don't like to work for that person. No matter how good the incentives are, if it's a if it's not a nice person, you're going to struggle. And I think in that situation, people are just trying to incentivize, like put in these great incentives to reduce their risk. But yeah, I, I think the only way to do this is to hire great people, fire bad people. Now, for me, who's going to be looking for someone to hire who is this great person, what am I looking for? Well, I'm looking for them to be hungry, someone that might not have the experience at the start and they might not have made much money yet. I actually see that as quite attractive because if they have potential and they're smart people and they're great people, I think they'll see this as an amazing opportunity rather than somebody who has, you know, worked at a $300,000 CEO or COO role and you're trying to entice them to come over to your business. Are they going to work? for 200K, 150K that I need them to? Obviously not. So, but that could be an amazing opportunity for someone who's far more hungry, trying to make their way in this world and maybe they're a bit younger and they haven't made big money yet. As a bad example, I only really have to look at myself here. I used to work at a company called Procter & Gamble. This was like 12 years ago now or something like that. And I just did exactly what I needed to do so that I would not lose my job and, you know, 
things would just smooth, continue rolling along as they had been. I was not hungry to grow that business. I was not hungry to climb the corporate ladder. I was just happy to get my paycheck at the time, save up that money and use that money to invest with. So like that's, I wouldn't hire myself 12 years ago because I just didn't have that hunger to drive the business. So I'd be looking for somebody who's not like me, someone who is really hungry and they see potential. And I think I can incentivize them at the same time so that they're rewarded financially really well for delivering on that hunger. And with a great person, you're going to have alignment and they're going to help you with those incentives. And they're going to be great to work with when you inevitably make a big mistake. And for me, I'm assuming that's going to happen many times. So I need somebody who is going to work with me on those big mistakes. They're going to be patient. They're going to be understanding. They're going to be good communicators. And they're going to understand that if the business is really struggling, that it's okay for a short period of time to, you know, reduce their salary if they need to. The business isn't performing. We need to like band together and work together. They're part of the team. And then they're an extension of me, essentially the owner. That's, that's the type of person you're looking for. You want to be going, uh, driving in the same direction rather than somebody just working for the paycheck. Something that I'm going to have to be really careful of is making sure that I'm patient and taking my time when I'm looking for this person, not just hiring the person to fill the problem at the time. Maybe I'm run off my feet and I really need help and I hire someone quickly and I don't want to fall into that trap. Um, I think a lot of people fall into that trap. I've had to fire people before in previous businesses. In a current business that I have in Indonesia, I've had to fire people in that one as well. It sucks. I don't want to have to go through that or minimize that as much as possible. So uh, slowing down my hiring process is definitely something that uh, I'm going to be trying to do <laughs> and hold myself accountable for that. I'll probably still make mistakes, but uh, I'm going to try to learn from that one. And I'm going to try not to fall for the trap where I uh, have, I'm run off my feet and I need to hire somebody to come in and help like immediately. But hiring quickly is always a mistake. Um, it's better to just slow that process down, keep searching until you find the right person, who is someone who is actually great because uh, firing people suck and I don't want to have to go through that. It's not worth the time and the energy. Um, it's better spent uh, looking for the, the right person at the start. Obviously, I'm still going to make mistakes there. I'm sure I'm going to have to fire more people in the future, but yeah, minimizing that is going to be better on my stress and my sleep. <laughs> and if I do crash and burn spectacularly in buying a private business, I always have my savings account, which is my interactive brokers, my, is my investing account. That's what I'm treating as my, my safety net. And yeah, interactive brokers link in the description below. It's the safest broker out there. That's the one I'm trusting with my savings. Highly recommend and gives me access to international markets as well, which is, uh, which is very important for me. All right. Hope you've enjoyed this one. I'll see you in the next video.